Hi, James Morton asked for pictures of how the train layout distribution is done, power distribution. Well, for me it's not a matter of pictures, it's a matter of video. My layout consists of uh, about 17 meter main line in two levels. It goes all around the room. And this is the main station. And it is fully automated. This is here operated by a computer program. I have a separate video. I will put the link in the description. How do I do my distribution? Let's show that to you. Everything starts here. I have quite a lot of power supplies. One is uh, for the DCC power. I think it's 80 volt DC. Then I have a 12 or 16 volt AC for some synchronous accessories. There's a 20 volt DC that I use as separate power supply for my switches or turnouts, whatever language you, you want to use. And then I have a 12 volt DC that I use for signals and houses, lights, so everything that's a light that I don't want to flicker. Here's my DCC central. But more important, I have made these kind of blocks. Uh, I have so many in my automation that I need, I think I have eight different of these um, S88 occupants detectors with current detection. So they will measure 16 blocks and with that comes then typically also 16 or, or 18 direct feeds that are not connected to a sensor. So I decided to have a little switches. So I have a very thick wire. Remember to put it in description, but it is, I think, four millimeter square. I have eight sections that I can switch off. So now this one section, which is behind this, plus all the direct supplies to the track are off. Why is that? Because if I have a short, I can simply Pull down those eight switches and I can find out where the short is and usually you can hear it that's one benefit these miniature circuit breakers have uh, a small coil for tripping and the coil will make a nice noise so it's easier to find actually the direct feeds are going even through a bridge rest rectifier to give them exactly the same voltage as here because also the sensor circuits go through bridge rectifiers so I won't have a voltage difference between measured and unmeasured sections which means that you have a very very equal voltage and a better sensitivity okay my DCC goes also through the black one so I have a red and a black and the yellow and the white they go uh, that's the 20 volt DC for the switches um, here I use two other colors for the 12 volt DC for the lamps, which is just a small, pe a small block. So I have a small bridge here connecting two blocks together always. So I have incoming and outcoming and what is actually the loads, they are very thin. And here I have the AC, which is used by some other equipment. When we go here, you can see the vast amount of wires needed to get all the sensor wires. They're all red or orange. And there's only a few brown feeds here and there. And this is the, uh, the turnout or switch decoder for four switches. But what I want to show you is, if I can find it here, maybe I'll go to another position. Let me go to the duck under. Here it's very clear. The DCC signal being 22 kilohertz signal has a very good chance of giving disturbances on the sensors. So if a sensor wire is running along these wires for two meters, it will probably generate some disturbance. And I do have at certain places every now and then a signal that comes even if there's no train. So this very thick wire, four millimeter square, is stranded to reduce the amount of 
problems. This is a DC wire for the wood, so it doesn't need to be. This one I also stranded just to make wiring easier to get them all together. So here I have sections. Where is the numbers? Six and seven. Six and seven. So eight is again somewhere else. And also here are a few of the decoders. And here you can see that I bring the 20 volt DC for the turnouts. And then here I have a very simple connection for the DCC signal to be decoded. So take the building off. Uh -huh. That needs to be glued. It anyway has some problems. And there's a plug connection up. Now I can take the building and all the technical stuff under it to my workbench and plug it back in. Ready. Done. Very easy. That's about it. So the main thing I would suggest to anybody, make sure your main distribution is thick enough. Take a thick wire because that will help you in not losing power. It will also increase the short circuit value of the whole circuit. Um, my digital central unit from DigiGuys, it will give 3 amps and then shut off. But if I use two thin wires, and I think the main loop around the room is about 20 meters, maybe a little bit less. Um, if I use very thin wires, and you may have even a longer connection of 2 meters from the sensor circuit to the actual track, and you get a short, it won't shut off. It's better to have it shut off. Not because of fire, but because of electronic damage. And simply, it's very nice to know immediately that you have a fault. And the stronger the fault is, the easier it is to find. So use thick wire uh, for your main distribution. And then probably it won't matter much if you use a very thin wire for a meter or two for the final connections. That's the trick. Bye-bye.